Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the cost recovery of certain properties that we called listed properties. What is the term listed property or simply put listed property? It refers to tangible personal property that's used for both, both personal and business purpose and it has a high likelihood of being used for personal purpose. So what are we looking at here? Well, let's assume a camera. You might have a camera for your business where you take pictures uh, for your product to advertise online. So you'll take pictures, you advertise online. It's being used for business purpose. Now also when you are in a social event with your friends, you, you also use this camera to take pictures for your own pur purpose enjoyment and list uh, put on Facebook for your friends, for your social connection to see. Well, guess what? This camera is being used for both personal use as well as business use. Same thing with a cell phone. It has, you could use it for business. You could also use it for personal. So as far as cost, de cost recovery or depreciation is concerned, listed, listed properties for tax purposes are a, are a specific category of asset that are subject to special rules for depreciation. So this assets we have to the we have to follow specific rules when we depreciate them. Some examples of listed properties are passenger automobile, which is a vehicle. That's another listed property. Specifically, we're assuming it's less than 6,000 pounds. We'll talk about that later. Cameras, tripods, lenses that are related to a camera, cellular phones, and other similar properties. So any, any asset that's being used for both personal can be used for personal and business at the same time. Now, for a long period of time, Computer and its peripheral equipment were considered listed properties. By the end of 2017, they removed it because now they consider computer is basically a business property. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Now, how do we depreciate personal property? Well, it all depends on the usage of that personal property. If the personal property is not mainly used for business, predominantly used for business, we have this term. If it's not, we cannot section, we cannot take section 179. We cannot take bonus depreciation. We cannot use makers. Hold on a second. Those are the three methods. Th those are the three methods that we use for tax purposes. Well, guess what? We're gonna go back to our favorite depreciation method, and that's the straight line method. Now, remember, we're, we're using the straight line method, but for the first year, we always we assume half a rate. So, if we're looking at an asset, how do we find out what's the straight line rate? So, if we're looking at an asset with five years, we'll take one divided by five equal to 20%. So in year one, 20%, except in year one, we multiplied by 50%. So year one is 10%. But the rate for year two is 20%. For year three, 20%. For year four, year five, 20%. Then in year six, you will take the remaining 10%. So that's the rate. So if you're looking at a property of 10 years, what's the straight line rate? One divided by 10, which is equal to 10%. For year one, you multiply the rate by 50%. So for year one, it's 5%. Then it's 10, 10, 10, 10, all the way until year 10. Then year 11, you will take the additional uh, 5%. What do we mean by predominantly used for business or mainly used for business? For something to be considered used for business, the business use of this asset has to be more than 50%. Now, how do we measure this 50%? based on business use and production. So if we're using this asset, using and producing uh, more than 50%, and we can count this, maybe a car through a mileage, uh, an asset through its hours, how many hours we're spending on it, or some sort of an output, we don't include the income in this test. So we don't say, well, it's generating more than 50% of our income. No, it's use, business use and production. So if the 50% test is met, 
It means we are using this asset more than 50% of the time for business. Because remember, any asset will have to be split between business and personal. Business use and personal use. If the business use is more than 50%, well, it's pre predominantly business use, ma mainly business use. If that's the case, then we can use maker with some limitation. We'll talk about the limitation later, which is the percentage of use. And for vehicles, we have other limitations. If the asset is not used mainly for business, it means it failed the 50% test. So we're using it 70% personal, 30% business. Then we use the S S SL straight line method. We use the straight line method. What happened if the proportion of a business decline to 50% or less after the property has been put in service for a year? So you put an asset, it was for predominantly business purpose, then a year or two later, it fell because you're no longer using it as much for business. What do we have to do? Well, we have to recapture any excess cost recovery. Don't worry, we'll, we'll work an example. So let's start with simple example to illustrate the 50% concept with listed property. Maria puts a listed asset categorized under a five-year maker's property class into a service August 3rd, 2022 with a cost of 10,000. She opt not to claim any extra first year depreciation. When Maria uses the asset 40% for business and 25% for income production, it is not considered primarily for business use. Why? Because for business purposes, for business purposes, it's only 40%. We don't count the income, the income production in this test. Now, when we depreciate this asset, what percentage do we use? Since, well, it's not 50%, we're going to be using the straight line method. Now, what is the, how do we depreciate this? We're going to depreciate this at 26% usage. The straight line recovery method is applied and Maria's yearly cost recovery is 10,000 times 10%. Where's the 10% coming from? Remember, it's a five-year asset, one divided by five equal to 20%. The first year will take half of it, which is 10%. Multiply by 65%. Again, why 65%? Well, because we combine the 40 and the 25 for depreciation purpose, not for the 50% test. So, we can use the 25% for the depreciation calculation, not for the 50% test. Okay, keep that in mind. On the other hand, let's assume Maria employs the property 60% for business and uses 25% for income production. Well, here, what's the majority of the, business, uh, the use? It's a business use. We surpass the 50% test. Well, what do we use now? Which method do we use? Well, now we have to use makers. We have to use makers. Why? Because we are using this mainly for business, more than 50%. How do we compute makers? We're going to take 10,000 times the maker's rate for five years, which is 20%, giving from the table's maker, times 85%. Why 85%? 60% plus 25. So for the depreciation, we do use the income production. So for depreciation, Depreciation purposes use the 85%, which is 60 plus 25. For the 50% test, you cannot use the 25% production of income. I don't need anyway, because I'm already using the asset 60% of the time. Now let's talk about a special type of listed property, and that's auto, auto, vehicles, passenger auto, okay? Additional restriction are, are applied to vehicles when it comes to cost recovery. Now, why? Why that's the case? Well, Congress says, look, I am not going to give you a deduction. What happened is this. If you are well off, what you can do is you can buy expensive vehicle. And what happened? And use this expensive vehicle for your business. Okay? Because you can afford it. And if you can afford it, most likely you're in a high tax bracket. So you can get an expensive vehicle, enjoy the expensive vehicle, and get a good tax deduction because, because your tax rate is high and what's happening is the government is subsidizing this vehicle. So what happened is because of, because of these potential abuses, these monetary limits were established due to suspicious that tax system were utilized to subsidize vehicles that were excessively costly, unnecessarily costly and luxurious for the business. Therefore, say, okay, you want to buy an expensive vehicle? That's fine, but we're going to limit you. We're going to say how to, how to deal with this luxury, auto luxury limit.
okay in the context of tax purposes a passenger automobile is defined as a four-wheeled vehicle duh, designed to use on public street roads and highway with unloaded gross vehicle weight rating not exceeding six thousand pounds so here we're looking at vehicles less than six thousand pounds now it's also important to note that this definition don't include vehicles used for trans for transporting people or property for compensation like if this is your cab that those th those rules those limits don't apply including those are used for uber or lyft if that's what you are doing ambulances trucks and vans because those are used for business purposes now let's talk about the limit let's dive a little bit more into the limit and i'm going to use the year 2023 as an example you could be viewing this lecture in 2025 2027 those numbers will change just want to let you know that's why i highlighted the year but the concept is the same the first year you are limited to 12,200. the second year 19,500. the third year 11,700. the fourth and any future years is 6960 again those will change now if the car is mainly used for business the first year recovery you can add eight thousand to it therefore the first year you can take twenty thousand two hundred they're trying to help you out if it's used for business also low luxury auto limits must be adjusted for personal use so if you're not using it mainly for if it's not 100 percent for business then you have to take into account adjust the personal use now the best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an example and to look at an example i'm going to take you to an excel sheet because i'm going to be include i'm going to be computing the maker's table so it's very important that you see the computation how this is being done so let's move to the excel sheet here we're going to assume that adam purchased a car and it cost adam sixty five thousand dollar a vehicle less than six thousand pound the business use is 80 percent therefore the personal use is 20 percent and we're looking for the sake of illustration the year 2023 and here are the limit 12,200 the second year 19,500 the third year 11,700 fourth year and subsequent year 6,960 now we are using this the, the vehicle is a five-year asset so the makers rate are year one 20 percent 32 19.2 11.52 11.52 and year six 5.76 now if you don't know what makers is you want to go to the makers mid-year convention and mid-quarter just so understand makers now how do we compute how do we compute the depreciation for this vehicle so it's a personal property and it's not being used for business 100 percent how do we do that well for the year 2023 let's compute makers what is makers makers will take the the cost times the rate which is 20 percent now the only thing different here is we have to adjust for business use times 80 percent so if we take 65,000 times 20 percent times 80 percent based according to makers it's 10,400 now is this the answer no why because we are limited when it comes to auto we, we are limited we are limited to what where we are limited year one to twelve thousand two hundred you might say great makers tells me it's ten thousand four hundred year one is twelve thousand two hundred i should be able to take ten thousand four hundred and the answer is wrong what you have to do you have to take the first year limit that's given by the irs and adjust it for eighty percent now we'll take 12,200 multiplied by 80%, we see that the recovery limitation, recovery limitation, this is misspelled, sorry, recovery limitation, recovery limitation is 9,760. How much depreciation are you allowed to take? You are allowed to take for year one, which is year 2023, 9,760. Done for year one. How about year two? Well, let's compute makers for year two. Well, 65,000 times year two times 32 percent times what else times the business use 80 percent if you if we do that we come up with 16,600 and 16,640 well the limit for year two is 19,500 well we're good to go no not yet we have to take the 19,000 we have to take the 19,500 uh, subject this to an 80 percent uh, business use which will give us 15,600 therefore we have to take 15 we're limited to 15,600 well and that's what we have to do for year three same concept year 2025 uh, here are the limit for year three and this is the makers I'm sure you can find 
the answers for this and this is what you do so if it's less than the recovery limitation for example makers here is less than the recovery limitation therefore we'll take makers but we have to look at makers and look at the recovery limitation and choose the lower the lower is re the recovery limitation lower is recovery limitation in year 2028 makers happens to be happens to be smaller so let's go back to the presentation and this is what we did where i showed you how we computed this on on excel sheet this these are the limitation now what happened if adam keep using this car beyond 2028 okay his reco cost recovery depreciation will be restricted to the lower of the recoverable basis or the recovery limitation which is calculated for our purposes 6960 because going after year four multiplied by the business use 80 percent 5568 now for the purpose how do we compute recoverable basis so we have to know how to compute recoverable basis in this context the recoverable basis is calculated as if as though the entire limitation was permitted regardless of whether it was or it was not so when we compute the recoverable basis for this type of depreciation we'll take 65,000 minus 12,200 what's 12,200 year one limit remember we did not take this much in year one but this is what we do we assume we ignore we ignore all the adjustments and we subtract 12,200 minus 19,500 minus 11,700 minus 6960 minus 6960 so on and so forth so this is what we do for this purpose just be aware of that now also you have to be careful when you are doing computation uh, for depreciation partial depreciation many students fall into this common mistake let me clarify it let's assume noah begins using a pre-owned vehicle on april 2nd which was purchased for 26,200. the vehicle is used 70 percent for business and 30 percent for personal well what can we do now which first of all which convention which method do we use is it the snl or is it makers and we use makers it's mostly uh, mostly business so the allowable cost recovery is 3668 how 26200 multiplied by 20 percent rate maker table multiplied by 70 percent here's what happened here's what happened some students what they do they will take 12200 and they multiply it by 70 percent no you don't do that you don't take 12200 multiplied by 70 percent the way you compute the depreciation it's makers you will take 26200 times 20 percent okay 26200 times 20 percent that's the maker depreciation and this happens to be 5240 it's way below the limit but you also have to reduce it by 70 percent to come up with the 3680 times 70 percent will give us 3668 not 3680 now let's talk about a different type of vehicle and those are suvs sport utility vehicle certain suvs are exempt from the luxury auto limitation since they are they are not categorized as passenger automobile so remember we talked about the limitation well the suvs they have special rules these vehicles are subject though to a 28,900 lim limit on section 179 so when it comes to section 179 they are limited to that much which is that's a lot anyway okay the restriction is applicable to suv with with gross vehicle weight exceeding 6,000 but less than 14,000 so we're talking about suvs that has more than 6,000 pound less than 14,000 again they are basically we don't have to worry about the limits that we that we talked about earlier year one year two year three year four like for the passenger now suvs let's look at an example let's assume adam purchased this new white range rover and let's assume it's more than six thousand pound less than fourteen thousand it happens to be eight and adam's using this 100 percent for business purposes and adam chose not to take the bonus depreciation how much can adam take in in cost recovery for this vehicle starting with section 179 we can take 28,900. then we apply makers we chose not to use the bonus depreciation this would have came next but we chose not to we're going to take 70,000 minus the whatever we took for section 179 and we're going to multiply this by 20 percent which is the maker five-year asset will give us 8,220 for a total amount of 37,120. 
Now also, Adam can choose the bonus depreciation and get the full deduction for this SUV. How? Well, we'll they will take 128,900 for section 179, and they will take the remaining, the 41,100 bonus depreciation, and get the full deduction. Now, would Adam want to do that? Well, for tax planning, he may or may not want to do that. Listed property. What happens if listed property drops below or fails the 50% usage test. Well, listed property, failing the 50% test upon placement must be recovered using which method? The straight line. No additional first year depreciation. We already talked about this. What happened if you initially placed the asset, it was more than 50%, then it dropped to less than 50%. Well, if you fail the greater than 50% after the property is in use, you will go back to the straight line for the remaining life of the asset at that point. Once you fail the test, then you are in straight line. The cost recovery of passenger euro under the straight line listed property is still subject to annual limits. So you're still subject to those limits if it, you are you are dealing with a with an auto, a passenger auto. Let's look at an example. On July 7, John places in service an automobile that cost 15000 The auto is used 40% for business, 60% for personal. Well, is it most, mostly business or personal? Personal. Which method do we use? The straight line method. We'll take 15,000 times 10% times 40%. Where's the 10% coming from? It's a five-year asset. One divided by five will give me the straight line rate. The first year, I only take half of it, which will give us 10%. Assume the automobile has a cost of 60,000 instead. Same concept. We will take 60,000 times 10% times 40%, which is 2,400. Remember, both computation, we still have to look at the limit, the limit. Remember, there's a limit. And what's the limit? The limit for year one for passenger auto is 12,200. We're dealing with an auto of 40%. The limit is 4,840, which we can take the 2,400. But remember, you cannot exceed the first year limit. So the straight line the straight line method is applicable irrespective of any future increase in the property business usage percentage beyond 50%. So once that's 50% is in, once that straight line is in, it will be used. So if the percentage of use exceeds that, well, we would still use the straight line. However, we'll increase the percentage, we'll increase the percentage of usage. Let's take a look at this. Assume in 2024 the business use became 60 and the person was 40 we would still be using the straight line. However, we're going to take 60,000 times, remember, this is 2024, year two. Year two, remember, the straight line method is every year is 20% after the first year times 60%. Notice, all that we did is we changed. So we're still using the SNL, the straight line method. However, we increase the business use percentage to 60 which is 7,200. 7,200 is less than the limit for year two, which is 19,500 multiplied by 60%. Remember, you always have to, when it comes to passenger auto, you have to compare this to the limit and those limits will change from year to year. What happened if we change from business use back to personal use? Okay, so when the business usage of listed property drops to 50% or less after the property, year of service, the property becomes subject to cost recovery recapture. Well, guess what? We're going to go back and do some computation and recover some cost. And we're going to recover that cost as ordinary income. Simply put, we took the deduction. We liked it. We enjoyed it. Now we're going to go back and recapture some of that deduction as ordinary income. Now, how do we Re how do we do the recapture? The excess amount of depreciation claimed in prior years through makers over the sum of permitted under the straight line. So that's, that's the excess recovery. Simply put, you're going to look at how much you took for makers. Assume you use the straight line. Makers, it's going to be more than the straight line. And that excess amount, capture in your taxes for that year as ordinary income. Yike, right? So let's take a look at an example. On January 3rd, 2023, Adam acquired a new vehicle worth 30000 The business usage was 80% in 2023. Great business mainly, 70% in 2024, great business mainly, 40% in 2025, whoops, we dropped below 50. Then we went up to 60% in 2026. Now, Adam chose not to take the first year depreciation. Let's look at the depreciation recapture that we have to do 
in the year 2025. So now we are standing at year 2025 when we dropped to 40 percent. So from the year 2023, here's what we have to do. We have to compute makers. How much makers we took? We took 30,000 times 20 percent from the maker five year table times 80 percent business use. We took 4,800. Remember, we always have to make sure um, we are, you know, we don't exceed the limit. The limit is 9,760. 4,800 is good for makers. What we do now, we have to compute as if we were using the straight line. If we were using the straight line, we'll take 30,000 times 10%. Again, I don't want to keep repeating how we're the 10% coming from times 80%. For the straight line, we would, we would use 2,400. The limit, again, we're good with the limit. Now, in that year, in year 2023, we have to recapture 2,400 of access depreciation because makers was 4,800. The straight line was 2,400. We're not done yet. We have to go back. We have to go to 2024. Again, compute makers. 30,000 times the maker rate, makers rate of 32%, you know, five-year class asset. Now, if you don't know where this is coming from, it's a five-year class asset makers. Uh, if not, go to my uh, makers cost recovery lecture times 70 percent the answer for makers for that year was 6720 we're below the limit we don't have to worry about the limit now we'll do the same computation using the straight line 30,000 times 20 percent times 70 percent again now we'll take the difference between the two and this is access depreciation we have to recapture so the total recapture access depreciation is ordinary income for 2025 is year three plus year, year 2023, plus year 2024, a total of 6,720. Oh boy, that was unexpected. We'll have to be recaptured as ordinary income. So what's going to happen in year 2026? Now we're back above 60%. Well, post 2025, we have to stick now with the straight line. Although we went back above the 50%, we have to stick with the straight line. Okay, let's keep going with the example. For the year 2025, how do we take the depreciation? We'll take 30,000 times 20% times 40%, because in year five, we took was used at 40%. So this is the depreciation. Again, we don't have to worry about the limit. We're below the limit. So 2025, this is the depreciation expense that we take. In 2026, now we're back to 60%. Well, that's great, but we have to stick now with the straight line because we fell below 50%, 30,000 times the straight line rate, 20% times 60%, 3,600. Again, I always check the limit. You are below the limit. Let's take a look at a summary of the listed property cost recovery because what happened with the with the what, what makes this like a little bit, little bit kind of confusing is you have a vehicle. So you, you have the limit limitation on the vehicle. So let's take a look at how do we deal with this. Let, let's take a look at this map. Well, is the property mainly used for business? If the answer is yes, you ask yourself, is this a, a passenger automobile? If the answer is yes, so you're dealing with a vehicle that's mainly used for business, how do we do this computation? Well, we're gonna be using makers if it's mainly for used for business makers, subject to recovery limitation and reduced by personal use percentage. So simply put, you have to go and look at the tables for every year you are limited and you're also when you compute the depreciation for makers you have to prorate it by the take out the personal use only keep the business use if the property is not an automobile if it's not an automobile we're not dealing with an automobile then we'll use makers we're not subject to any recovery limitation remember when other assets we don't say there's you know the government tells you that's the maximum you can take you're not subject to that however you have to reduce the depreciation by any personal percentage. Personal percentage, you take them out, you only use it for business. Again, is the property mainly used for business? If the answer is no, then you ask yourself, if it's not mainly used for business, is this a vehicle? And if the answer is yes, now you're dealing with the vehicle, but that vehicle is less than 50% used for a business. What's the difference between this yes and this yes? Well, under this yes, you would use the straight line method. Again, subject to recovery limitation, just like the makers, and reduced by personal usage. Again, here we are dealing with a personal property used less than 50% and not a vehicle. If it's not a vehicle, what do we do? And it's not used mainly for business, use the straight line. We are not subject to any recovery limitation like an auto and reduced by personal, personal use percentage. I hope this slide gave you a summary 
of everything that we did up to this point. Now, the best way to deal with this is to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional lectures about makers, mid-quarter convention, cost recovery, work MCQs, true false. Look at the notes to give you a better picture whether you are an accounting student, a CPA candidate, an enrolled agent. Invest in yourself. Your career is important. Learn this so you can pass your exam, pass your certification, so you can get somewhere. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.